virgines, facile formose. Viva mones virgines, facile formose. Viva le banduries, tenere amabiles, pone laboriose, pone laboriose. Gaudia musigitur, juvenes dun sumus, gaudia musigitur, Juvenes dum sumus, posius iutam juventute, pos molestam selectute, nos abebitumus, nos abebitumus. On behalf of the rector, of Universidade Nova de Lisboa, Professor António Rendas, is open the ceremony of the award of title of Dr. Honoris Causa, Your Excellency, the Minister of Science and Technology of South Africa, Dr. Grace Naledi Pandor. Your Excellency, the Minister of Science and Technology, Professor Dr. Manuel Leitor, is now the speaker. Dear friends and Naledi Pandor, dear friends, dear professors, rector of the University of Nova, and my dear friends, Commissioner Carlos Moedas, and all of you that are participating in this session. It's certainly a great privilege for me to present to you Naledi Pandor, because she is one of those unique world leaders that is guiding a new transforming vision. And the honorary doctorate is certainly an honorific, uh, an honorific title granted to distinguish a learned person whose knowledge and um, wisdom were considered as, as, as exemplary. And today we, we have the privilege to have with us one of those that in fact are changing education in science policy at the world level. And I'm particularly proud that an, 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 such an outstanding person, such as N N Nadeli Pandor, has been recruited among the faculty of the new University of Lisbon, Nova. Naledi has been unique in fostering an inclusive approach to science, technology, and economic development, bringing to the center of our attention all of those in the margins of knowledge-driven societies and knowledge-based economic activities. Even last April, in Azores, she guided us in order to better develop an Atlantic partnership, but again, remembering more and more that the future of knowledge-driven societies do require to consider all of those and be inclusive at large. But to understand the unique role of Naledi at a world level, we must understand above all that science is a common good therefore belonging to everyone, and everyone must benefit from it. Actually, following the recent UNESCO 2030 Agenda for Open Science, its universality of science, coupled with the capacity for change, provides science with the ability to cross political, cultural, and psychological boundaries towards the sustainable development. But, as UNESCO remembers, this requires policy leaders with the ability to fully understand the role of science in society and related complex relationships. And this process, again, requires leaders that understand and activate the challenges of opening up the scientific process as a whole, reinforcing the concept of sci sci um, scientific social responsibility through engaging not only the science community, but also society at large, increasing knowledge and the recognition of social and economic impacts of science. And the message conveyed to the world by Naledi Pandor in the last decades is so deep that calls our attention to better understand her grassroots. She received most of her education in exile, 
and matriculated at the Gaborone Secondary School in Botswana. Daughter and granddaughter of great African masters is a rather, in a rather backward-looking South African society. Naledi grew, uh, grew in a strong political and family debate within a continuous art fight for freedom. Her mother, Fikili Matthews, was one of the first African women to attend Fort Air University to read science. Her father, Joe Matthews, was instrumental in starting the youth lead of the African National Congress and ultimately led the youth lead while still at university. Joe Matthews was a, cl a close friend of Nelson Mandela and the president of INC in exile, Mr. Oliver Tambu. Both were students of the legendary professor Zeki Matthews, grandfather of Naledi Pandor, who was responsible for crafting the so-called Freedom Charter, and which is still the blueprint of the vision of the INC. He exercised a major guiding and moderating influence on the African political history in one of its most critical periods in the last century. Above all, Naledi Pandor and their siblings were taught under the principles of tolerance, of humanity, and of clear separation of right from wrong. Naledi is married to Sherry Pandor, and they have four children, and they have two grandchildren. But the leadership of Naledi Pandor and their unique role at the world level needs to be recognized above all based on her hard-working career. By understanding scientific knowledge in its true holistic dimension, contemplating its diverse components and dynamics, she has, be, uh, she has been able to help all of us capturing um, fruitful and regenerating function of scientific knowledge. Her master lessons to engage in capacity, to promote knowledge, and its sharing and social appropriation have been a knowledge at the world level. But I would like to a knowledge today, three main principal characteristics of Naledi Pandor. First, as an educator. Second, as an activist and social entrepreneur towards the public good. Last but not least, as a policy maker in science, education, and social and regional development leading to sustainable de development. First, Naledi Pandor obtained a BA in History and English at the University of Botswana in the late 70s before ever, uh, leaving to the UK, where she, she graduated with a master at the University of London. Back in South Africa, she was awarded an MBA in Linguistics uh, in 1997. And in that year, she also obtained a diploma in Leadership and Development from the Kennedy School at Harvard. Naledi is a teacher by training and has been involved in education in various ways along her career. Above all, she was a teacher at the Bevin School in London in the early 80s and uh, she was in her, uh, um, when she was in her mid-twenties. In the, in the early 80s, she talked at Botswana and from 84 to 85, she was a lecturer at, at the Town College of Education in Northwest. Also, in the late 80s, uh, she was a senior lecturer in English at the University of Botswana, and from 89 to 94, she was a senior lecturer at the University of Cape Town. Following South Africa's first democratic election in 94, Pandora was elected to the parliament, and since then has been a critical player in South Africa and Africa policy-making process. She became a whip, and then a deputy ship with of the uh, um, ANC um, when she was 40. And she led several committees in the 90s, uh, particularly became a chairperson of the, the National C Council of Provinces in 1999. In addition, she has been played a number of uh, roles, being member of the ANC Executive Committee, uh, Chancellor of the Cape Technicon member and Council of the University of Fort Air. Also from or since uh, April 2004, 
She has been in the South African government in many different roles, first as Minister of Education until 1999, then Minister of Science and Technology until 2012, then Minister of Home Affairs until 2014, and since May 2014, she is back in the Ministry of Science and Technology of South Africa. But there are many other reasons that clearly justify and above all, make this Doctor Honoris Causa very unique and prestigious for NOVA. Under Minister Spandor's leadership, South Africa has become a catalyst for developing scientific capabilities across the African continent. Once, she mentioned, we have an unfortunate legacy inherited from the former education system of our country, which discouraged black learners from taking mathematics and science for metric. I'm calling on, on you all to reverse this legacy by taking these subjects in order to change the situation. And their unique role as beyond the, the her unique capacity to speak, but also to act within the African um, com, um, continent, particularly towards economic growth, and making a long-term project um, that um, uh, certainly um, make South Africa one of the leading countries at the world level um, and in the current um, um, situation, particularly in areas which cover energy security, poverty alleviation and health care, funded essentially through the technology innovation programs, which are clear examples of the, the leading role Naledi Pandor is taking um, at, uh, in South Africa. Also, under her leadership, South Africa has made numerous contributions to building science structures in organizations such as the African Union and South African Development Community and to strengthening the science granting councils of other African countries, also expanding the role of the Global Research Council throughout Africa. Naledi has been arguing for decades about the role of science to reduce inequality and income inequality. For example, a role has been very important in addressing critical issues for uh, social change in that scientists and innovators in Africa still need to work harder to get or to put the continent on the map and in line with global standards. Actually, a few years ago, in a unique um, audience at UNESCO, she said, the issue that confronts us today is what we can do to reduce inequality, a worrying inequality. We don't publish, we don't have a significant numbers of PhDs, and we, don't, we, and we are not innovative enough. We don't even have new products, and we also don't introduce services. We came off rather uh, uh, dismally. Naledi has worked tireless to connect research with sustainable development roles with this framework of reducing inequality. And she's leading numerous efforts in the last decade or so to promote research capacity of young and emerging scientists, particularly female scientists. For example, under her leadership, the South African Research Shares Initiative was promoted to fight against brain drain from South Africa, and the program, which was established in 2006, is designated to attract and retain excellence in research and innovation in South Africa public universities through the establishment of research shares at several um, institutions. Also, she led the implementation of South Africa's 10 years innovation plan and the national research and development strategy. Actually, she was the key person in initiating and hosting the Science Forum South Africa in 2015 and make of it a global um, event uh, which has been recognized worldwide in the last two years. This has been the first event of this kind in Africa, aiming to provide a platform for debate on the role of science, technology and innovation in society. But in the last few years, Naledi Pandor has been also the main driving force leading to the establishment of the Square Kilometer Array, the so-called SCA demonstration project, which is the world's largest and most sensitive radio telescope. Early this morning, we were in the Institute of the Telecommunications also to make sure that the involvement of Portuguese teams in the SCA 
are and follow the guidance of Minister Pandor. In this project, which will bring to Africa for the first time in the world history, a major um, scientific and research infrastructure very much connected with the um, future of telecommunications and the complete transformation of um, um, radio, um, telescope, science and technology issues. SCA will be able to detect an airport radar on a planet tens of, li of light years away and exceed the image resolution quality of the Hubble Space Telescope by a factor of 50 times. And um, it is expected to produce science that changes our understanding of the universe. In other words, for the first time, Africa is going to participate in a significant scientific project which will result in global research infrastructures located in the African country, but certainly throughout the world and also with the Portuguese participation. I should also acknowledge the unique role of Nade, Naledi Pandor over the last year in cooperating with Portugal to promote a new holistic and integrative approach to, to knowledge on space, climate, energy and oceans, together with data science, which are areas which have been particularly in included in the declaration signed yesterday between Commissioner Moedas, uh, Naledi Pandor and Minister Gilberto Kassab in Brazil, which I hope will open to the world a new framework for Europe to cooperate in, in the South Atlantic. But the role of Naledi Pandor in the high level event last April in, um, in Azores was remarkably important to help us understanding the way to foster a research agenda on Atlantic uh, interactions in a way that we include all and do not leave no one behind. These are the lessons that Naledi has continuously shown to, to the world. Um, and in fact, she is an outstanding woman um, uh, that have worked towards the scientific advancement in her own country, but also in a global perspective. And this made Naledi also um, very well known at a, a, a global level. For example, she received the Grand Scores of Merit with Star from the Federal Republic of Germany, one of the highest possible recognitions in Germany. And this specific award honors her commitment to promote German-South African relations, particularly through scientific and technological cooperation. And she has been a leading person as well now in opening up or in helping opening up, therefore, um, that the European Commission and the, the leadership of Carlos Moedas is putting also at the world level, opening a new framework for cooperation between Europe and the southern um, 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 continents. She was also chosen by the American Association of the Advancement of Science to receive last year the award for science diplomacy, not only for integrating science in policy making with the, with within her own country, but also for her advoca advocacy of young and women scientists by supporting initiatives that encourage international collaboration for both groups. Today, with this Dr. Honoris Causa, we are certainly launching a new area of scientific collaborations between South Africa and Portugal. Again, Naledi Pandor has shown to the world that um, we need to approach science from an inclusive way, bringing to the center of our attention all of those in the margin of knowledge-driven societies. And I'm particularly proud that Naledi Pandor has been recruited among the faculty of NOVA. Thank you very much. Now, Director, Professor Antonio Rendas, awards doctoral insignia to award Naldi Pandor and the patron gives the diploma to the warden. Rector Magnificus, I kindly request the title of Dr. Honoris Causa to grace Naledi Pandor, Minister of Science and Technology of the Republic of South Africa, 
for her outstanding contribution for the recognition of science as important, uh, recognition of the importance of science by society and for her extraordinary endeavors for the e equality before knowledge. I, Antonio Rendas, Rector of Nova University, give and have the honor of giving the title of Dr. Honoris Causa to Melody Pandor, Minister of Science of South Africa, for all that she's done for humankind. And I'm going to give her the Medal of the University with a lot of honor. <coughs> Dr. Naledi Pandor is going to speak. to the distinguished rector of this wonderful institution, Professor Hector, to Professor Santana, to my colleague, Minister Hato, to my colleague, Commissioner Mueda, to the distinguished academic community, I know you don't like to be drawn away from your lectures, but thank you very much for being here this morning. To all the distinguished guests, the officials, student leadership, and the wonderful choir, allow me to begin by expressing my humble and sincere gratitude to the university for having agreed to grant me this great honor there are no words that can describe my deep feelings, humble pride, and excitement. People in my country would tell you it's very rare for me to be moved to tears, but I'm just at that point at this moment, dear Rector. The relations between Portugal and South Africa have traditionally been close and pragmatic due to historical and cultural ties that go back to the seafarers Bartolomeu Dias and Vasco da Gama in the 15th century, but more specifically in our time to the immigration of Portuguese citizens into South Africa after the independence of Mozambique and Angola in the mid 70s. South Africa now has the third largest Portuguese population outside Portugal, approximately 600,000 in number. The Portuguese community contributes to promoting good relations between our countries and our people, as well as economic development and job creation in our country. It also plays a key role in strengthening our bilateral relations. In fact, uh, dear Rector, I was most amazed earlier this year when attending a conference on, at the Azores that uh, I ended up having my lunch in a public restaurant with South African Portuguese citizens who demanded that I should lunch with them as I was their minister 
although they were in their other country. So the bonds are just that strong. This ability that we have as South Africa to coexist with a diverse and multinational population remains a positive characteristic of our country. We are well known for having embraced the ideal of unity in diversity when we established a constitutional democracy. Our experience of the debilitating pain of racism and exclusion resulted in an extraordinary response by our leaders and the majority of our people. We chose reconciliation as our foundation and the pursuit of a nation united in diversity. We intended to build a new society committed to humane ideals and basic human rights. This was and is an ambitious ideal for a country shaped by the evil of apartheid, one of the most horrendous attempts at social engineering since the slave trade. We have been fortunate, however, as we continue to strive to retain this ideal, and we have had the benefit of learning from great leaders, such as President Nelson Mandela, whose birthday, which would be 100 next Monday, we will all celebrate by doing what he asked, which is just give 67 minutes of your time to serving someone else on my birthday. No gifts, no accolades. All I ask for is 67 minutes of your time. And indeed, every year on the 18th of July, all of us in South Africa attempt to give 67 minutes of our time. We have somewhat similar ambitions for progress through science, technology, and innovation, as with the ambitions for our new country. In the area of work I'm responsible for, I've been very fortunate to receive exceptional cooperation and support from my counterparts in Portugal. As a young Minister of Education then, we established firm links with the late Professor Mariano Gago, with whom I became very good colleagues and friends. Together, we laid a very strong foundation for strong bilateral cooperation between our countries in education and particularly in higher education. In 2015, I was extremely pleased to host Minister Nuno Crato in Durban, South Africa. We signed then a science and technology agreement which forms the basis of initiatives that Minister Manuel Heito and I will oversee in the next few years. We are absolutely ready to start implementing science and technology initiatives. We are further encouraged by Portugal's turnaround strategy for the use of renewable energy to curb the effects of climate change, something we desperately need to do in my country. Given our intention of continued growth in the South Africa-Portugal collaboration, I wish to briefly highlight some areas for joint research. We have in South Africa, in terms of our national strategy, five grand challenges identified in our plan. The grand challenges relate, firstly, to our investment in biosciences for public health and food security. Secondly, to better understanding and mitigating the impact of global change. Thirdly, the pursuit of energy security and particularly renewable energy resources and technology. Fourthly, our intention to use science and technology to fight poverty and exclusion in our pursuit of a new nation. And fifthly, optimally exploiting the potential of space science 
and technology, as well as the full breadth of the astronomy sciences. With regard to the biosciences, our South African scientists have for years been at the forefront of the fight against infectious diseases such as HIV and AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis. Internationally acclaimed work underway includes the development of a malaria drug, a single dose malaria drug currently in clinical trial in some of our institutions. The development of an HIV AIDS vaccine and a microbicide gel to prevent HIV AIDS infection. We contribute to many international observation systems. We're also well placed to leverage the opportunities of the so-called green economy with exciting plans, for example, in the field of waste research and waste innovation. Energy security is high on the global scientific and innovation agenda. Our hydrogen and fuel cell program is showing great promise in the early innovation stages. It's an excellent example for us of the beneficiation of our raw materials, particularly platinum, through science and technology. We are consistently expanding our work in the renewable energy field, particularly solar energy, and are currently building large solar plants to create an innovative energy mix in South Africa. We also work strenuously on programs to lift people out of poverty, especially in remote rural areas, utilizing science and technology-based interventions, which have attracted huge international support and interest from our respected partners, partners such as the European Commission, as well as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We are, as a country, recognized as a nation that has attempted to invest in space science to improve the quality of life. This, for example, through making data and information products obtained from space platforms available to improve decision making in managing disasters and supporting rural planning and urban development in the most underdeveloped parts of our cities. The jewel, as Minister Hato has said, in our scientific crown lies in the field of radio astronomy. Economically, the square kilometer array represents the largest science-based capital injection into Africa by far. The estim estimated initial investment is in the order of 1.5 billion euro, which is a significant investment in global infrastructure in our terms in South Africa and on the African continent. This investment will result in a number of immediate and long-term socioeconomic benefits accruing to the entire African continent and to our various global partners. Because of the scientific nature of the project, the biggest benefit will be the improvement of the skills base and access to top international research facilities and networks which will in turn boost our output of scientific publications. We believe that the study of science and technology is not just beneficial to our students in and of itself. The study of science and technology, we think, is primarily about finding solutions to real problems that we face, particularly in the fields of nutrition and healthcare. As a country, we still unfortunately spend less than 1% of GDP on research and development, and yet we lead research on the African continent. We believe a concerted African effort is required to generate a greater investment in science and technology, and I'm very, very pleased that in our early discussions with our colleagues in Portugal, it is clear that we will partner together to address this particular set of challenges. As a country, we place a great deal of value in forging mutually beneficial partnerships with other governments across the world. But even more than this, our enterprise is to establish partnerships 
between people, between researchers, between institutions. So as I speak about parts of our science agenda, what I'm attempting to encourage is that we should see postgraduate students from Portugal establishing research partnerships with postgraduate students in South Africa. It is, as director, my firm view that a postgraduate student who has no international experience does not deserve to receive a postgraduate degree. And thus, I am very, very keen to see increased numbers of international partnerships among young people. I think some of the evil and difficulties we see in the world today are because we know very little of each other. And if we could establish knowledge links, we would use our capacities to bring difference to the world and to build a very different world from the one that our children are going to inherit from us, which we have ruined so terribly through inadequacy of collaboration, inadequacy of partnership. Our collaboration with Portugal is among our most valued partnerships, and it is our intention to see it grow from strength to strength. We believe innovation and investment in new knowledge builds a strong foundation for economic growth and societal change. We've seen this happen in Europe, in the Asias, as well as in Latin America. The current affluence of developed countries is largely the outcome of their investment in new knowledge and the resulting spread of information and communication technologies. We have to take advantage of these opportunities. It's absolutely imperative for Africa to develop a larger body of scientists to work in Africa, to support development on the continent, to play a role in smooth technology transfer and to drive innovation. It is objectives such as these that Minister Hato and I hope to advance, hopefully with the support of the academic community at this wonderful institution. I would like to conclude my brief remarks by thanking the university for the prestigious honor you have granted me and my family, and my country, and our government by bestowing this wonderful honorary doctorate on me. I, I don't know whether I truly deserve it, but I am absolutely honored to receive it. I believe if I use the opportunity created through the partnership we're building with Portugal to alter the destiny of young people on the African continent, then I will be judged as having deserved this honor. And once more, I sincerely thank you, Rector, Professor Santana, and the university for this wonderful privilege. Thank you very much. Si a rama com canhe quenco, si a rama com canhe quenco, quenco, si a rama, rama si a rama, rama si a rama com canhe quenco, quenco, si a rama, rama si a rama, rama si a rama com canhe quenco. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching, marching, we are marching in the light of the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching, marching, we are marching in the light of God. See a hama kung kanye quenkos. See a hama kung kanye quenkos. See a hama. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching. 
marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching, marching, we are marching in the light of the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching, marching, we are marching in the light of Let me first start by remembering two people that have been already mentioned here, who I'm sure where they are, where they are, as particles, as souls, as spirits, are looking at us. Uh, Minister Naledi Pandor, you mentioned President Nelson Mandela, and also mentioned José Maria Mugato. I'm sure that I'll be very pleased to know that this is happening here. So thank you very much. Mr. Uh, Minister Manuel Itur, Secretary of State from the Rolo, uh, uh, Commissioner Carlos Moedas, uh, President of the University of Almada, Dean of FCT, Vice Rectors, uh, members of the Council of Deans, uh, professors, researchers, other distinguished guests, students, and uh, I also agree with our new doctor. Magnificent chorus. It was a pleasure to have listened to you as well. I'm going to start by reading a poem. And the poem is called Portuguese Sea. O salty sea, so much of full salt is Portuguese tears. All the mothers who have had to weep for us to cross you, all the sons who prayed in vain, all the brides-to-be who never married for you to be ours, O oh sea. Was it uh, worth doing? Everything is worth doing if the soul of the doer isn't small. Whoever would go beyond the cape must go beyond sorrow. God placed danger and the abyss in the sea, but he also made it heaven's mirror. I've just read a poem written by Fernando Pessoa from his book, The Message, written and published in 1934 and translated by Richard Zenit and published in Portugal in the English version in 2008. Fernando Pessoa was born in Lisbon in June 1888, but he received his education in Durban, Natal, South Africa, where he lived with his mother and stepfather between the ages of seven and 17 years of age. He returned to Lisbon in 1904, fluent in English, to become one of the great Portuguese poets writers and philosophers of the 20th century. Despite uh, the fact that he led a rather discreet life, earning money as a translator until he died in 1935, is now widely recognized as one of the icons of Portugal. Funny enough, the message was the only book that he published in life. After his death, and the years that followed, his work unique in Portuguese literature was slowly recognized because although he was a prolific writer himself, he created approximately 75 other authors whom he did not call pseudonyms, but because he felt that the word did not capture their specific intellectual life, and instead he created them as heteronyms. Some of the figures are really unique, even in the world literature. In 1915, Fernando Pessoa, together with Mário Sá Carneiro, a poet, and José de Almada Negreiros, a genius with multiple artistic talents, produced a literary magazine called Orfeus, which introduced modern literature and futurism in Portugal. The poem entitled Portuguese Sea, which I read at the beginning of this very short statement, 
could only have been written by a Portuguese who knew South Africa, and particularly the Cape route. Fernando Pessoa was a mystic dreamer who, in the path led by Luís Camões, our great poet, describes the permanent fight against the sea performed by the Portuguese sailors and the price they paid for discovery. The Portuguese don't fight the sea anymore, but they fight for education, they fight for health, they fight for social rights, and they fight for peace. They also fight for new knowledge and its application for the development of Portugal and of mankind. Mr. Uh, Minister Nali Di Pandor, Mr. Manuel, Minister Manuel Itor, Madam Secretary of State, Commissioner Carlos Moedas, dear Dean of the University of Belfa Almada, dear Vice Rectors, Academic Staff and Academic Staff, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great privilege for NOVA to award the title of Honoris Causa to Minister Nale Di Pandor because she's also a fighter. She's indeed a long-time fighter for justice, freedom and knowledge. NOVA is a young university founded in 1973 within the framework of the expansion of higher education in Portugal. NOVA is situated in the Lisbon metropolitan area and our campuses spread on both sides of the Tagus River. The one where we are now, probably, and the Dean is always very happy when I say this, one of the biggest in Europe is the campus of Caparica for science, technology and engineering. NOVA has a total of 19,800 19, students, roughly 1,600 academic staff, of which 83% on full-time PhDs. Every year, we open 2,700 places to first cycle students and receive, and we are very proud of it, for these 2,700 places, 24,400 24, applicants, out of which more than 6,000 choose NOVA as the first choice. NOVA has also 40 research units, 70% of which in the evaluation performed by our National Foundation of Science and Technology were classified as exceptional, excellent, and very good. This is well above the national average. NOVA is also the Portuguese university, and uh, I challenge the commissioner to check this, with the best funding performance by full-time equivalent of academic staff in Horizon 2020. It is also worth uh, highlighting that since the launching of the European Research Council, uh, scholarships and grants in 2009, researchers of NOVA were awarded 13 grants, and this is new because until the day before yesterday, there was 12. So 13 is a lucky number. And the last one was announced yesterday on the biomedical area. It is actually the first one on the biomedical area, and coming from my school, I feel very proud that it happened. It was not my merit, but it is their own merit. Also yesterday, yesterday was a good day, we are informed that NOVA was placed in the 40, 40, uh, position 40, 41 at the QS ranking of universities below 50 years, and although our minister is not very fond of rankings, you must uh, forgive the rector to be a little bit proud of that, because there are more than a thousand universities challenging to this ranking. NOVA has also more than 2,000 enrolled foreign students, unfortunately not, not that many from South Africa, but we are going, to, we are going to, 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 to change this picture. And the students that we have at foreign level are mostly master students, which is also very interesting. The top five nationalities at the moment are Brazil, Germany, Italy, Angola, and Cap Verde. This internationalization makes NOVA an open institution believing and promoting a global dialogue in an attempt to promote new bridges between different cultures. Dear Minister Nale Di Pandor, you are now part of NOVA community and we feel very privileged to have you as our peer. May the Portuguese spirit of the discovery, which turned the cape of the storms into the cape of good hope, led you to continue to support scientific and technological cooperation even in rough storms. 
from now on, you have another safe port to come ashore in the campuses of Nova. Welcome to Nova. Thank you. On behalf of the Magnificum Rector of Universidade Nova de Lisboa, Professor António Rendas, is closed the ceremony of the Doctorate Honoris Causa. We go out with the academic procession. Viva a Academia! Viva Professores! Viva a Academia! Viva Professores! Viva Membro Colibre! Viva Membro Colibre! Sempre sinti in flores! Sempre sinti in flores! Vita nostra brevises, brevises!